Let the challenge begin. Your boy's back with another one. <laughs> Bring bud on, I ain't scared. Bring bud on, why you scared? My fellow Earl Spence Jr. fans, I gotta keep it 150 with y'all today. Please don't get offended, cause I'm speaking from the heart. We cannot become what just a short time ago we said we hated in boxing. We can't do it. For years we've been out here screaming from the rooftops, banging on our chest, saying that we and our man Earl Spence was about one thing and one thing only, the best fighting the best y'all know i'm telling the truth we said we hated boxing politics we was a clique of errol spence jr rough riders we said us and our man errol spence jr was gonna change the boxing game we didn't care about network affiliations promotional packs tv deals nah we could care less about that junk we wanted the best fighting the best and we screamed for it and we demanded it we turned our flamethrowers on and we roasted danny garcia sean porter keith thurman manny pacquiao tim bradley and anybody else we thought was avoiding spence we didn't care if they was on top rank espn the zone they could have been on pbc premier boxing champions or they could have been on ybmbc Yo, big mama's boxing champions. We didn't care. We just said if they're a welterweight and they're at the top, they need to be fighting Spence. Yeah, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Tell me what part of what I just said was a lie. None of it. Cause our man Earl Spence was out here walking around the welterweight division like Thanos the world destroyer. He had everybody shook. And we knew all these welterweights were scared of Spence. We knew it. We could smell it on him. So we was talking all big and bad. Yeah, we had a lot of bass in our voice. But now from the ashes, another world destroyer has risen. Terrence Bud Crawford, AKA Darkseid. And he ain't scared of Thanos. You know it, I know it, everybody know it. And my perspective as an Errol Spence Jr. fan is this. That's the dude I've been waiting for. I've been looking for Darkseid. Cause I know Thanos can make a real statement with him. But that's not the perspective of all of us Spence fans anymore, is it? Nah, some of us have lost that base in our voice. Now we'd rather talk percentages, splits, A side, B side, anything but best fight the best. Now I get it, all of that has its place. But today, we gonna talk about something different. Today's video, if you really a fan of Errol Spence, you should be demanding that he fights Bud Crawford soon. Y'all know what it is. Amazing Eric, y'all. Get out your feelings, cause it's all love. Ow! E fan, what's good? It's time for another one. Here we go again. Let's ride out, y'all. I tell you what today, I'll be Baby Creed, and y'all hop on them dirt bikes, them four wheelers, and hit them wheelies, and let's ride out just like this. Come on, y'all. I'm running down the street. Y'all style on them. Come up right beside your boy. Yeah, we riding out on them today. Because y'all already know, when you get that notification to pop up on your phone from your man, Amazing Eric, you say, ooh, the E-Fam about to ride. I'm locking in. And if you're not getting that notification on your phone, what I need you to do right now is grab that subscribe button and choke slam that thing just like Thanos choke slam Spider-Man. Ram that thing through the ground, y'all, just like this. And I'm already excited right now because I got some brand new Errol Spence and Terrence Bud Crawford talk to share with y'all today. Yeah, we're going to give it a whole different perspective. I'm hyped. I'm excited. Look at me. That's me on the screen right there. I'm letting my hands go. Woohoo, look at me, y'all. Uh, 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 dip. Right here in about 30 seconds, I'm giving y'all more punches than Robert Easter Jr. and Bartholomew gave us in 12 whole rounds. <laughs>
No disrespect to either one of those two, but oh, that was an ugly fight. That was horrible. But let me tell y'all why I'm really excited. See, I won't be having this Bud Crawford Earl Spence talk today alone. Uh-uh. I told y'all some new things was coming to the show, didn't I? Today, we will be introducing our first character to the show. What I want to do is take you down to the sticks, to the country, and let you see firsthand the real, raw, straightforward, in-your-face boxing talk that I grew up on. Yeah, we got a guest today. Y'all can call him Uncle Ray Ray. Yeah, my uncle, Uncle Ray Ray. Are you there, Unc? Can you hear me? How you doing that, nephew? They, are we up? Is we live? Are we on the show? So you can see me. You can yeah, see um, me. Okay, can so see. we ain't in the same room. So that that kind of throwing my mental. Boy, I look good on this camera, don't I? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I really appreciate you being here, man. I really do. Thank you for joining. But a few things I have to say right off top. The first thing is you didn't get a haircut. You told me you was going to get a haircut for this show. Unk. The second thing is why you sitting outside in the field? Why you out there? And the third thing is I do appreciate you for getting a new shirt. I see you got the new shirt. I like that. But do something with the tag. Reach and pull the tag off. You got your tag showing, fam. The tag. Oh, oh, yeah, the tag. Sorry about that. Sorry, nephew. I wasn't trying to do that to you. <laughs> we just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shirt back. Right after the show, I'm taking it back. I did this for you, nephew. But I, I got the shirt down from Joseph A. Williams. It's down, down the street, Joseph A. Williams at the mall. Unc, the name of that store is Joseph A. Bank. Not Joseph A. Williams. Stop being so country. Why y'all think everybody last name Williams? Joe's what? It ain't no Joseph A. Bank. It's Joseph A. Williams. I was just there. Joseph A. Bank. Joseph A. Williams is the name of that stuff. That's the thing with you youngsters. You think you know everything. It was Joseph A. Williams. Okay, okay, um, okay, you win. Listen, we got to get started with this Errol Smith Bud Crawford talk. I want him to hear what you got to say. But do me a favor. Get off that video camera mic. Grab that other microphone I sent you and talk on that. We having a bad connection. They can see you again. You can come back on video at the end. But just get on that other microphone for right now so they can hear what you got to say. Okay, feel me? Well, this one here, can you hear me? Can you hear me better now? Yeah, that's better. Okay, good. Let's get, you're right. Let's get into it because I want to do some Errol Spence Bud Crawford talk. I hate to get off that video camera though Cause I'm looking good You just a hater See some of these young men you got watching your show They might have a great auntie or uh, grandmama to look at this hmm. Don't get it twisted I'm straight P-I-M-P hmm. Hell, I might be some of them granddaddy <laughs> Spreading seeds No, no We are not talking about you spreading your oh, No, anyway Let's break down this Errol Spence Bud Crawford talk y'all To my fellow Errol Spence fans Cause everybody know Errol Spence is my favorite active fighter. Yes, he is, and he's going to stay that way. Let's get going with the first one right now. Errol Smith Jr. fans do not become a hypocrite. Am I starting, Unc, or you want to start with this one? Well, you can... I started, yeah, I started because I do think it's some hypocrisy going on right here. Yes, it is some hypocrisy. Cause we were calling out everybody and their mama to fight Errol. You know we was. But before I say this, cause it's on my mind, I gotta go back to something you said a little earlier. I gotta speak on this. That whole Robert Easter fight in Bartholomew. Bartholomew. I don't, but whatever you say his name is, Bartholomew. Bartholomew. That was a horrible fight. One of the worst fights I ever seen. And that boy Bartholomew, this Negro running around here doing that chicken thing through the whole fight, uh, uh, uh. sticking his head in, pulling his head out, like he playing hokey pokey or something, look at this dude, pull up a picture up, look at his head, look at this negro's head, look like a bunch of earthworms crawl on his head and went super saiyan, well, Unc, actually, Bartholomew is Cuban, I don't give a, well, he's a Cuban Negro. See, you don't move to the city and change, that's a Negro, I've been a Negro my whole life, I know a Negro when I see one here. <laughs> Okay, okay, let me just cut in right here. I'm just gonna cut in right here, Uncle. okay? Listen, I wanna talk to my Errol Spence Jr. fans right now about hypocrisy. This is not an attack at any of us. I'm on your team, y'all know I'm straight Team Spence, but it's something we gotta look at here. We gotta be careful. See, if you are Errol Spence Jr. fan and you are like me and you spent the last two, two and a half years saying the best need to fight the best, that's the only thing you said 
that's the only thing you were focused on when there were other fighters who were not pbc fighters they were at welterweight you demanded they should cross lines and make a fight with spence we called them scared it's like being on a job right and you're sitting on the bottom you're out there on the line you're trying to work yourself up on that job and all of management you don't like the way you're being treated you don't like the things they say so you start talking and you're going at it even if you're not saying it out loud on the inside you hate what management is doing you hate the way they treat people and then one day you work your way up you get in power and you get in management now what are you gonna do then are you gonna try to bring about change and be the manager and the person that the people on the line really need to make the whole company better or are you gonna be a hypocrite and start being exactly what it is you said you hated because it's team spence that's exactly what's happened to us we've worked our way off the line and guess what we the boss now the welterweight division we're the shot callers we're in power they're coming to us asking for our help and now some of our voices have changed some of the same stuff we hated for them to say some of us are now saying let me jump in right there nephew go ahead unk yeah i want to speak on this hypocrisy with Earl spence right now hypocrisy unk the word is hypocrisy. Oh, I swear. You correct me one more time. I'm coming on a plane down there and take my belt off and tear your butt up like I used to when you was a little boy. I promise I will now. Now, one good thing about being an Earl Spence Jr. fan, what I used to love about it, is see, there was never a time that any of us was saying the cold words for we scared of another fighter or we don't want to fight another fighter. Let me tell you what a few of those cold words are. The first thing you can do to always know when a fighter don't want no piece of another fighter when he asks about him, the first thing he gonna say is who he fought. Who he fought, who he fight, yes. Errol Spence had never said that before. Then in that one press conference, when he was running around with the more weird acting boy, Adrian Brown and that other light-skinned boy. Tank Davis. Yeah, him, Javante, when they was running around, and they said Errol Spence was drunk. And this is what I led that to, and I left it at that, because they said he was a little tipsy. And God knows, I done got tipsy a lot of time on a hot Saturday night down at the nursing home with Miss Maydale and Miss Bernadine. <laughs> I told you, B-I-M-B. Unk, you a freak. Stick to the subject. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, nephew. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But listen, they asked Al Spence about Terrence Crawford. First thing he said, who Terrence Crawford fight? Who Terrence Crawford fight? I said, oh, hell. He, he go with that stuff, too. And now the fans. I was arguing with a fellow Al Spence fan the other day on the line. He even got Al Spence as a little avatar. So I know he a fan. He up there arguing. I said, Al need to fight Bud now. He get to talking all this stuff like he Florida or something. Last time I checked, that's another cold word. Last time I checked. Whenever somebody say that, they don't want to fight. Every time Floyd Mayweather said that, it was a fight he didn't want to take at that time. Last time I checked. A few more things you can hear him say. A side, B side. How much did he sell on his last fight? What about his numbers? What about my numbers? I need the bigger split. And for whatever reason, that split is always 70-30. Whenever it get to that, they act like they don't want to fight. I'm praying I'm wrong about this with Earl Spence. Because I know Earl Spence is the truth. But we need him to step up. And fans, some of y'all need to find your balls. That's right, because you done lost them. <laughs> My friend old man Raul say, you done lost your huevos. <laughs> Earl need to be fighting Bud right now. I don't want to see him fighting Sean Porter right now. That ain't the fight I want. He don't need to be fighting Deacon Porter. Fight Bud Crawford right now. Unc, I actually disagree with you right there. I myself do not mind the Porter fight next. Hate or love Sean Porter? Let's be real here. He is still one of the top names in the division. He also is the WBC champ, the green belt. We say that is the most important belt. So I can see Errol wanting to collect that belt also. If you're a Deontay Wilder supporter, you say, well, he has the green belt. Joshua has all the rest. We say the green belt is important i can see errol wanting that belt and no matter what sean porter is a top name that's not a scrub fight but it's after that fight what he does next i don't want to see errol talking about keith thurman then danny garcia then maybe porter again if porter gave him a good fight then maybe if mikey garcia moves up and has a good win at welterweight let's give mikey another chance that's possibly five fights right there which in boxing terms could push the crawford fight back three years no if we don't get this fight in their prime it is a shame for all of boxing i'm not saying he has to fight bud next but after the porter fight we need some serious talks to happen about errol versus bud and here's the funny thing i think what's happening to a lot of spence fans and even errol spence himself maybe we're not used to someone who's not scared of him 
That's the thing with Bud Crawford. He ain't scared of Errol and we feel it. It's foreign to us. He represents the first person that you're not sure about. After Bud beat Benavidez, we had a lot of confidence because Bud looked vulnerable there. But Bud looked beastly versus Khan. He was big. He had grown into the weight. He showed power, speed, and skill. And that kind of scared some of us. And what I mean by scared is you're just not sure if he can beat Bud. That's okay. We can still ride with our man, win or lose. I want to see the fight. You should want to see the fight. We are not helping Errol Spence by trying to protect him from Terrence Crawford. No, he's the truth. We said we wanted to change the game, so let's change the game. Oh, you preaching now. <laughs> he preaching. Uh, jump back on that camera. I'm going to let you do the outro. Take us home. Uh? And remember, you watching the amazing Eric Sports Show. Brand new sports show. And this is Uncle Ray Ray now. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm going to tell you I'll be back. Now, you're going to like, you're going to comment, and you're going to... Wait, what's that other one? Somebody tell me. What, what, what's the other one they say? Oh, forget this.